foam roller. That's the first thing to start with. Then there are other tools that we can use uh, if you have them available to you. But for right now, just a foam roller will do. So first things first, let's roll out some of our biggest, 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 biggest muscles, the booty, the glutes, right? So we've been sitting on them a lot. Cross your right leg over your left, then rotate onto your right. When we sit, they start to turn themselves off and not fire properly. So by doing this rolling, we can actually get them to engage again. So just roll back and forth, breathing as you do it. You wanna really allow your body weight to kind of sink into the roller. Breathe. Keep going. Hi, Eileen. I see that you made it. We're on the right side, cross that right ankle over the left knee and roll. Rolling into the glute, rolling into the hip. Eileen, if you have other equipment besides just a foam roller, will you shoot me a little message there? And I'll add some other stuff in today. If you've only got a foam roller, that works too. We'll stick with that. Good. We're gonna spend another 30 seconds here. If there's somewhere that is particularly sensitive, if you found a trigger point, you can stop there and do little small rolls. Breathe. This is the part that's often neglected. We do all the hard stuff, but we don't always take the time to roll which is what's gonna actually help us recover from workouts, gonna improve our mobility. Good, and let's switch to the other side. So, have a seat, cross left over right, and roll right over onto the left side. Keep going. Keep rolling. Well, I mean, it's just you and me, so that works out fine. Roll, roll, roll. Good. Making sure that you're really dropping the knee down towards the ground. So you can get a little more into the hip and get a little bit more into the piriformis so that when it gets really tight, it can actually cause excessive pressure to be put on the sciatic nerve and that's where you start to get that radiating down your leg. So this can help open that up, make sure the muscles are moving properly. Don't worry, I'm not sweating from the foam rolling from teaching the hip class right before. Good. All right. Now, before we move on to the legs, the, the sides and backs of our legs, fronts of our legs, we're gonna start with the front. So we're gonna go to our anterior tibialis here in the front. We're gonna think about our shin. We're not gonna be right on that hard bony part, but instead, instead right to the outside. So you'll kind of have your foot turned in, your leg turned in. You're gonna roll from the ankle to the knee without going over any joints. And being a runner, that can get really tight. So we wanna make sure that we're rolling it out. Now, if, again, if you found a spot that's a little more sensitive, hang out there. For me, it's a little closer to my ankle. Good. 
Be here for the next 15 seconds or so. Good, and roll the full length again. Good, and let's switch sides, other side. One side that's more sensitive than others, totally normal. Good. And again, if you have somewhere that's a little more sensitive, let's hang out there for a second. You'll be amazed at after foam rolling, like how much you can actually move and articulate better through your body. Be lighter a lot of times. And good. All right, onto the IT bands. So start that foam roller right at your hip. Top leg is crossed in front, bottom leg is straight. And you can't see my bottom leg right now, but you will in just a second when I roll forward. So you're gonna be down on your elbow using your, I'm on my right side down, so my left hand will help push, my right elbow will pull, my left foot will push. My right leg does nothing. So I'm just gonna walk it forward till I get to the knee and then back. So it's hip to knee, nice, slow and controlled. And we really wanna allow our muscle to sink into the roller. So that's why we're not going super fast. We're trying to keep that bottom leg as relaxed as possible. It's not doing any of the effort. It's not pushing. It's not attempting to pull. It's sort of just along for the ride. Good. Couple more passes. One more. All the way to the knee, all the way back. Beautiful. Bobby pin shooting out of my hair. All right, so now we're going on to our lateral quad. So our lateral quad is gonna be the exact same positioning we were just in, with the exception of we do a quarter turn towards the center. So, if I go to my IT band, I'm gonna turn towards you a quarter turn. That's it, I'm not all the way down, I'm just a quarter turn in, and the same thing. To the knee, and back up to the hip. Knee, and hip. This is often sensitive for people, but it's gonna be even more sensitive for you if you're engaging. So make sure that you're keeping your leg as relaxed as possible. And for me, I sometimes get some tightness up here in that hip area, so I'm gonna stay here. But if you have another area that you feel like you should spend the next 30 seconds on, find it. If not, you can keep rolling back and forth the full length until you find something. So there's another spot for me. Good, we've got about 10 seconds here. We'll do a couple more passes, full length, and then we'll move on. Good, I'm gonna scoot down a little bit. Nice. One more full pass. Awesome. So right onto the front of the quads. This one will feel like a welcome relief, both on your arms and your legs. So both quads just facing down, using only the upper body to pull yourself and push yourself. Good. You may find that your left, because we haven't done that side yet, or at least I haven't, whichever one you haven't done, 
feels a little bit more sensitive right now than the one you just rolled. So it gives you kind of, it's kind of an interesting way to feel how the impact of rolling is such an immediate benefit. Good. Awesome. So now we are going back to IT band on the other side. I'm going to flip around so you can still see me. You can just face the other direction. Starting at the hip, dropping down onto the elbow, right leg crossed in front, left leg just hangs out. Good. From hip to knee. Try to keep your body nice and long so you're not curling up the upper body. You're making sure that you keep your spine elongated when you're actually walking those hands forward. Your leg that's over the top might not move, might not need to. Like mine's not moving, but those arms certainly should. Good. Now let's find a spot. Let's find a spot that needs a little more attention. Right there for me. Hang out here for 30 seconds. I'm getting a little side plank action too through my shoulder. And we'll go back to that full length roll in about 10 seconds. And five, four, three, two, one, full length. Good, one more full length, nice and slow. Awesome, all right, got that quarter turn again. Let me just adjust my roller. So, you're here, you just turn that quarter turn in, and then hip to knee. from the workout and this. Scoot down a little bit. Find a spot. So for me, I got one down close to my knee. Hang out there for 30 seconds. You can just stop on it or you can do little rolls like I'm doing. We still have 15 seconds. Sometimes 30 seconds is so fast and sometimes it's so long. For five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Full length again. Two more nice slow passes. Awesome. All right. Before we move on to the calves, give the upper body a little break. We're going to move on to that low back. So roller is right behind the low back, leaning onto the right side, making sure your spine is not touching the roller. So my spine is right here, slightly off, rolling from the lower ribs to the top of the glutes. big movement, but it can be sensitive for people. 
And you can kind of rotate the hips slightly, get a little more into the side. But try again to relax. You can't do much good if you're not relaxed. And other side. The whole time you're keeping your booty up off the ground as you do this one. Your feet are on the ground, your one elbow is on the ground, but that's it. Nice. Do you have a sensitive spot in there? If you do, it's not uncommon where the QL and the psoas insert. If you spend a lot of time seated, they can definitely be inflamed. Good, and that mid back, right where the bra line is. Go ahead, bra line, hands behind your head. Lift your booty, roll back towards your head, drop your head down. As you roll back towards the bra line, crunch forward. Nice and slow. Really allowing it to open up your shoulders and your chest as a secondary um, benefit of rolling your upper back. You can actually get a little bit more space in your chest. Really rounding, getting into that mid-back. This one is often people's favorite. Good. Couple more passes here. One more. take it back to the calves. Now that we've given that upper body a little release, we're going to put it right underneath the ankle of the right leg. We need to roll neutral. We need to turn our uh, foot in from the hip, not from the knee, as well as turn out from the hip on both sides. So place the left leg right on top of the right leg for some added pressure to get a little deeper into that roll. If that is too much for you, Bring your foot to the side, all right? So you can have both options, deciding which works best for you, but you're gonna roll the full length of your calf, and you're welcome to set your body down at any point in time that you need to, and adjust your hands, and roll. There's not really a right or wrong other than, move my weights, other than you don't wanna go over the joints that's the big thing. Nice. A couple more passes here. Can't see who, but it looks like we got some late arrivals to class. Welcome. Find a spot that's sensitive and hang out there. For me, from all the jumping around, I can definitely feel some sensitivity in my calves. But jumping is so great for us because it clears our lymphatic system, which is your body's sewer system. Can't actually pump out the waste on its own. It needs our help. Good. Now, turn your right foot externally rotated. Turn to the outside from the hip, not the knee. Add that left leg on top. And roll. You're not going over any bones. You're staying all in the muscle. Good. Now I've got some sensitivity down here by the ankle, probably from the many times I've turned ligaments in my ankles. Um, so I'm gonna stay down there for a moment. You find your own spot to hang out that needs a little extra TLC.
Good. And one more time, actually two more passes, full length of the ankle to the knee, full length of the calf with it externally rotated. Good, one more. Oof. Okay, now we gotta turn in. So internally rotated again from the hip, not just trying to yank the knee over there. And cross. So one or the other is always more sensitive for people, either externally or internally rotated. And you may find like for me, down closer to my ankle when I'm externally rotated is sensitive, but up closer to my knee when I'm internally rotated. And I'm sure that has to do with the way I run, jump, you know, all those things, my day-to-day -day movements, which muscles I'm engaging a little bit more of, and how I'm recruiting those muscle fibers. Good. Find your spot if you've got one. Spend a little more time there. And a couple full passes. All the way. Good. All right, we gotta do the other side. Shake out those arms if they're a little tired. Starting at the ankle of the left foot, left leg, I should say, crossing the right leg over the top. Full length of the neutral position of the calf or the foot. So we're going now right down the center of the calf. My left is for sure more sensitive than my right today. And sometimes that flip flops back and forth. But I've been having some left hamstring issues too, so this doesn't surprise me. Good, nice and slow. Remember, we need to allow that muscle to kind of form around the roller. We need that muscle to relax. Good, and find your spot that you're gonna spend your extra 20, 30 seconds on. Good. And full length, I'm gonna shake out my arms for a second, and full length of that calf again. Beautiful, externally rotate now. Back at the ankle, turning from the hip, rotate it out, cross the right leg over, give my little wrists a little stretch, and roll. similar to the other side, I'm a little more sensitive when externally rotated closer to the, um, to the ankle, so I'm going to spend my time there. It's a little lumpy in there, which is for sure from years of playing soccer and having a lot of trauma there. So I need to spend some time to break that up. more seconds here. For five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Full length of the calf again. Twice more while you have the right leg sitting on top and we're going nice and slow and controlled with the foot turned out still. We still need to go to foot turned in, but we want to finish here first. 
and awesome. All right, foot rotated in from the hip. I can see I'm not as, I don't have as much rotation on this side as I do on the other side. That's something I should work on. I'm not able to rot internally rotate quite the same. Two or three full passes before you stop and find an area to work on. And on this foot, I've got two, or this leg, I should say, I've got two spots, one high and one low on my calf that could use a little extra attention. I'm gonna go high, because that one out of the two is actually the more sensitive one but it means I do need to spend a little more time rolling out this left side. Keep going, we've got ooh, 20 seconds here. Another 10 seconds. My arms are getting tired. That's why we gave them a little break earlier. Good, and let's roll the full length again. forearms all right it's gonna be our last one for today so we're gonna go uh, palm facing up we're gonna use our other arm right on top and we're gonna roll from wrist to elbow the added pressure from the other arm allows us to get in there now I'm not intentionally moving my fingers that's happening as I roll over the different parts of the muscle and that's totally fine. Good. Especially if you spend a lot of time gripping things like I do for sure with weights, um, your cell phone, typing at a computer, those kinds of things. Our forearms get really bound up and we just don't even realize it. One more pass. Good, other side. Palm facing up. Apply pressure with the other arm right on top. And you may find your more dominant hand might be more sensitive. The hand or wrist that you sprained before might be more sensitive because there's some fascial tissue that's gotten damaged in there. Keep going. For me on this left wrist, it's definitely a little... Where should I say?